reading from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. Let's pray before we start. Holy and righteous God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations in each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. May it bring you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke 6, 17 through 19. When they came down from the mountain, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large level area, surrounded by many of his followers and by the crowds. There were people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from as far north as the sea coasts of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those troubled by evil spirits were healed. Everyone tried to touch him because healing power went out from him, and he healed everyone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Last night I was watching the Auburn Ole Miss football game, and in the first quarter of that football game, uh, two of the defensive players for Auburn, a linebacker and a defensive lineman, were, were given uh, Ole Miss quarterback Bo Wallace a chase in the backfield, and just as they were about to get to him, he, he unloaded the football, and, and the two defenders hit him, one high, one low. And, and, and the one who hit him low around the hip area, when you watch the replay, his neck jerked quickly to the left. And, and his name was Casanova McKenzie, and he didn't get up. He lay there on that field. Players came over, then coaches came over, then the EMTs came over in the cart, and they got the backboard out, and they put him on the backboard, which took, as you might imagine, you know, 10, 15 minutes, as they carefully got him on that backboard without moving his neck and loaded him on that the golf cart and slowly drove him out toward the tunnel. Every person in that stadium and everybody on TV that was watching, I know, that great crowd that was watching, I dare say, most everybody said a prayer for that boy. <laughs> Regardless of where you were as, as a follower of God, uh, whether you were a seeker or agnostic or what have you, I dare say everybody's attention was focused on that kid. And most everybody, I, su I suspect, said a prayer that he would be okay. You see, in this story, when Jesus has already chosen his 12 disciples and he comes down off the mountain and he comes down and, and there's this huge crowd of folks gathered. And there's people of all stripes there. There, there. there are foreigners there. There are people that are, I suspect, that are agnostic, that are maybe atheists, that don't care, that maybe worship other gods. They're all there. And there's people that are curious about who is this guy? Now, if he can, well, who cares who he is if he can heal Aunt Susie? Hey, That'd be great. There's all kinds of people there. Not unlike those everybody that was in that football stadium last night that may have said a prayer, that might have brought Casanova McKenzie into the presence of God, lifted him up so that, so that he might be touched by God's healing hand. We have all that. Matthew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all of them looking for a touch. Unamas. Yeah. <laughs> We've got, as is illustrated in this passage, three groups of people. The crowd, the followers, and the disciples. Now the crowd, as you might imagine, is those people, well, it's, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. They're out. Some of them believe. Some of them 
are, are, are struggling with who is this guy? Just curious. Maybe they're checking him out to, to try and see. Maybe they just need to be healed of some physical infirmity and, and they, they don't care who he is. They just want to be healed. Wesley said about them, about drawing a crowd, he said, catch on fire and others will come and watch you burn. <laughs> I suspect there's some of that going on. Just curiosity seekers. People coming to see who is this guy? I've heard a lot about him. Is you know, let's go see if he'll do something that'll impress us, you know. There are all kinds that are gathered. And then there's the followers, those that have, uh, have decided that this guy is for real, that he is the Messiah, but they haven't, maybe haven't fully committed. They're still kind of, they believe, but they're still struggling a little bit. They, they haven't fully committed. Remember in, in uh, Luke chapter 8, there's a story of, um, they call it the miracle on the way to a miracle. It's where Jesus is on the way to heal Jairus' daughter, and he's in this crowd, and, and, and he's pushing through this crowd, and all of a sudden he turns, stops and says, somebody touched me. And the disciples are all like, well, sure they did. I, I don't know how you're going to get through this crowd. But I, he's like, no, somebody touched me, and power went out from me. And he turned around and there's the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. And she falls down before him. And he said, woman, your faith has healed you. Boom. She was a follower. She knew that if, if she could just touch the hem of his robe, she would be healed. Let's see. There's the crowd. Okay, one more. The followers. One more now. We're going to talk about the disciples. The inner circle. Not just the 12 apostles. These are the people that are sold out to Jesus. Committed followers who know that in touching Him, healing comes forth. And, and, and according to Miriam Webster, a disciple is one who accepts the teaching and spreads it. So this is who the disciples are. Mary, Martha, Lazarus certainly would be considered disciples. Mary Magdalene. Those who, who, who buy in wholeheartedly to Jesus Christ and they proclaim the good news about him. Now, Jesus, as you will call, was focused on teaching those people, the disciples. Jesus, what did Jesus say in Matthew 28? Go forth. He said this to the disciples. Go forth. And did he say, go draw crowds in my name? Did he say, go make followers for me? Jesus said, go make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. You remember that? Right? Uh, Jesus understands and he's trying to teach us. And I dare say we've all spent time out there as the crowd, right? I mean, we've all been there. But he, he knows that we need to draw near to Him to be touched, to get that touch in our life. Not just a one-time touch, which many in the crowd are just hoping he'll, he'll heal them of their physical infirmity and they can go on about their way and forget about it and live their life. Healed of whatever is their problem. Now, a year or two later, something else is going to crop up and they're going to need to come back, right? 
the disciples recognize that Jesus is the source of true healing, not just bodily, not just mentally or emotionally or financially, that He's the whole enchilada, that He can bring healing to your heart, to your whole life. He can make you whole. He can bless you and give you comfort and peace that passes all understanding. He can give you the hope of life eternal. He can restore us. Because we're all broken. We're all fractured. We've all been marred by sin. But it's in touching Him. It's in staying near to Him and, and holding on to the hem of His robe that we continue to be healed. That we continue to be blessed, to understand the truth about Jesus and to spread it. To try and help those that are out there in the crowds, whatever their, whatever their situation may be, whatever their inclination that they might come to Jesus too. That they might come and touch Him. That they might come to realize their deep need for being healed. Jesus understood that completely. He didn't come into this world to be a great orator, to be recognized as a great preacher, to win accolades from everyone. No. That's not why he came. He recognized that we needed to be healed. That all of us have a condition. We're sinners. We have all rebelled a bit against Jesus Christ. We have fallen away from God's perfect example. He came so that He might pay the price for our sins once and for all. He gave His own life on Calvary so that by the blood that He shed, we might be healed. We might be Restored that, that our relationship with God might be made whole again. That it might re be repaired. The breach that we made would be forever healed. And would remain healed. Not only now, but forever. And so that we might, too, we might share that with others. That they might know it as well.